So in the camera community, I feel like there is a bit of a split between people. There's people who like camcorders and there is people who like DSLRs or mirrorless style cameras. But what if there was a camera out there that brought the best of both worlds together? Well, as a matter of fact, there is a such thing as that and we're checking one out here today. There. Welcome back to my camera collection. In today's video, we're going to be checking out the Sony NEX VG10. We'll be going over some of the specs of this guy. Then we'll go around and check out the physical features of it. And I'm going to share a little accessory that I think makes this camera just a little bit more versatile than what it already is. And at the end of the video, I will showcase some of the video footage that comes out of it. That being said, let's get into today's video. And yes, I finally have a camera that actually works today. The last few camera videos I've had has had uh, some issues with uh, camera footage uh, coming out of it and I haven't been able to show any of the camera footage out of them. We finally get one that works. <laughs> so the Sony NEX VG10 is from 2010 and you can record onto SD cards or onto Sony Memory Stick Duo cards. And yes, the lens does come apart just like a DSLR does. The only difference is, is it's a camcorder body with a DSLR mounting system on it. So the Sony NEX VG10 was released in 2010 for $2,000 and it's the first model of the NEX uh, series. You do have the NEX VG10, the VG20, VG30, and the VG900. And I think to this day they still make a bunch of different variations of the, uh, the VG models. Uh, I think they're just way more like cinematic kind of cameras. They have way more of a boxy body on them with uh, uh, interchangeable lenses kind of like uh, if you can think of like a red camera it does have a Dolby digital surround sound microphone on it so it will pick up audio from pretty much 360 degrees of the microphone it has a 3 inch LCD screen that produces 921,000 pixels so it does have a pretty nice screen on it in my opinion it also uses the Sony e-mount system so if you are a Sony user like the uh, the Sony Alpha series cameras, if you have one of those. Um, this NEX VG10 uses the same mounting system. So if you already have lenses for those cameras, you could pick up one of these bodies for a lot cheaper and be able to check it out for yourself and be able to just use uh, the lenses you already have if you have a uh, Sony Alpha series. The maximum resolution for still images or photos is 14.2 megapixels. And it records in 1080i at 60 frames per second. Now, if you don't know, 1080i is a little bit less quality than 1080p. Um, 1080i stands for interlaced and 1080p is for progressive. It also has a optical steady shot system on it. The minimum illumination on it is 11 lux, so it doesn't do great in low light but you can probably find lenses out there that can bump that up a little bit that do a lot better in low light. The viewfinder also makes 921,000 pixels in it, which is insane because it's such a smaller LCD screen than the screen itself. So great job on Sony on making uh, the viewfinder have just as many pixels as the screen does. So if you've looked at one of these cameras before, you've probably seen that the lens on them are generally a silver lens and this one is a black lens. Well, yes, the original lens that it comes with is silver and it's a 18 to 200 millimeter lens lens on it and the one that is on this one is a 28 to 70 millimeter on it so it's not the original lens but it still works pretty good I like the way that it looks um, I just wish that I could zoom in a little bit farther than I already can so now that we've gone over some of the specs on it let's check out the physical features of this guy shall we so starting off at the front like we always do so it is a 55 millimeter lens thread on the front so uh, if you want to throw like an ND filter or anything like that on it that's the size that you would need I've tried attaching my 58 millimeter uh, optica fisheye to it and it doesn't focus quite well enough for it to uh, show a good image with the the fisheye on the front so I think you would need a, a bit of a wider lens for it like the original 18 to 200 millimeter I think this one's just a little bit too zoomed in for it to focus at 28 millimeters so the lens hood you can just twist and it pops off like so fairly easy definitely more of a, a DSLR style 
lens hood on it rather than like a camcorder style one, but it still protects your lens. Now this lens does have autofocus, but the camera itself, you have to manually zoom. The NEX VG10 is the only model out of the four that I listed that doesn't have a rocker zoom on it, but the NEX VG20, 30, and 900 all have rocker zooms on them. So if you want to zoom with this camera, you have to do it manually just like a DSLR. So the lens itself, like I said before, is a 28 to a 70 millimeter lens with a uh, f3.5 to a 5.6. Um, aperture on it. And I guess technically, this camera would technically be a mirrorless camera rather than a DSLR, traditional DSLR style. Um, I guess mirrorless cameras were available back in these days, <laughs> back in 2010. It might've been the start of, a, of an era. So coming along the side, there's not really any options out here for buttons or anything, but along the bottom is your SD card slot. There's a little door that pops open and then you can slide in your SD card or memory stick duo if you want. Now, as for the screen, this is the only camera that I have ever messed with that has an LCD screen, but it only rotates 180 degrees rather than 270 degrees. So you can't film yourself uh, selfie style like how I can see myself on a DSLR. It doesn't flip all the way around backwards. It only lays flat like this. Kind of weird that they did it like that. I guess they assumed that the people that were buying this were more uh, filmmakers and not uh, making videos like, uh, like what we're doing here. So on the inside of the camera, you do have a very limited selection of buttons here. So up on the top left, you have your menu button. In between that, you got the display button, so you can turn the display on and off. Along with your playback button, you can push that and go straight back, straight to playback. Up and down, or you can have it on auto. You have viewfinder slash LCD. So what's cool about that is most camcorders, you have to have the screen closed to be able to look through the viewfinder, but you can have the screen open and push that button and be able to switch back and forth between being able to look through the viewfinder and the LCD screen. So I find that actually really convenient. And then the button here on the bottom in the middle is your exposure, so you can uh, adjust the exposure. And then you have your focus button, which is your manual focus to turn it on and off. A white balance button to obviously change your different white balances that you want. And then there's a scroll wheel here, and it scrolls up and down and pushes in like a button, just like a lot of traditional camcorders have. It allows you to cycle through through the menu and be able to select things and all that. So I'll show you just a little bit of what is inside the menu. So if you push menu and then it will show you six different selections that you can go into on here. So you have your shoot modes, you have your camera mode, so you can change the different settings in the camera mode like autofocus and steady shot and all that kind of stuff. You have your record mode and image size so you can change like uh, the, the quality of video footage that it puts out and the resolution of like your photos and all that. Um, you can change like your LCD brightness and your color along with the playback. You can go into playback and delete things and uh, change settings for your playback functions. And then you have setup which is kind of uh, functions that the camera camera can do. And then there's a thing in here that says shoot without lens. So what's interesting about that is I bought a little adapter and this is the earth adapter. This is a uh, lens mounting adapter. So you can adapt Canon lenses to your Sony E-mount lens uh, cameras. So pretty much what this allows you to do is you can take your lens off of here, your Sony lens, and then you have this little adapter here. You put the smaller side in where just like a DSLR lens would sit, click it into place. And now you have this adapter and you can run Canon lenses on your Sony E-mount. So now if you're a skateboarder out there, you can use the traditional Sony lens that it comes with. A lot of people use Canon um, to film skateboarding and stuff. So if you already have a lens that is compatible with Canon and you already have a like an Optica fisheye, you can 
run this on the front here and now you have yourself a fisheye system and you can go film skateboarding with a Canon lens instead of buying a super fancy Sony lens that's out there. Um, they do make some cheaper fisheye lenses that um, are compatible with the Sony E-mount system but if you already have a Canon lens like I do then this this works perfectly for you. Now this system isn't going to work for all Canon lenses. I've tried some of my other ones that's on that I have like a my kit lens that's an 18 to 55 millimeter. I've tried my 75 to 300 or is it 200? And I've also tried my 10 to 18 millimeter. Since this lens is manual focus only anyway, this is the only one that I've been able to find that uh, the manual focus uh, actually works for. The other ones, they're manual focus, but they have to be connected to the camera for the camera to control the manual focus anyway. Since the adapter doesn't have any connectors to it, you can't change the manual focus. So I only recommend getting this little adapter if you're going to only use an Optica uh, fisheye on here, like the 6.5 millimeter. I just thought that was a cool accessory that can make your camera a little bit more versatile. If you want one of these, and if you have a Sony NEX uh, VG model, um, I'll leave a link in the description for one of these. They're only like 35 bucks, so they're super cheap and they, they work pretty good. In order to get it to work, since it doesn't have any connectors that connect to the lens to, or connect the lens to the body of the camera, the camera won't recognize that there's anything connected to it, so it won't let you record. So I found out if you go into the uh, the setup section of the settings and you go to shoot without lens and you enable that, you can now record with your fisheye and it doesn't have to have a Sony E-mount lens attached to it. You can even just take the whole lens off and have the sensor completely exposed and hit record and it'll continue recording. Definitely turn that on if you're going to be using your Canon lenses for this. Okay, so enough about that, let's move on here. So the viewfinder is very simple Similar to a lot of other Sony cameras that I've used, especially more modern ones like the Sony FX7 that I have here. You also have your, your focus here on the bottom so you can adjust the focus for your eye. And then along the back, you'll see this big hole in the back and that is the, the battery compartment. So it actually hides very big batteries if you wanna use bigger, uh, more long lasting batteries with this camcorder. I guess it's more of a, an appearance kind of thing, but it makes it so it the, the battery isn't sticking clear out from the camera and it's a little bit more protected on the inside here. But what I found that is super interesting, most cameras, the connectors that it clicks into are usually on the bottom of the camera and these ones are on top. So instead of going from the top and sliding it down in, you go from the bottom and slide it up, which took me like forever to try and figure that out. I thought that there was something wrong with the battery. So I just thought that was interesting that it was the opposite because I haven't seen a camera do that before. So coming along the right side of the camera, you do have the battery release button here on the side. And on the back, you do have your traditional record button along with your on and off switch. It's very traditional looking to Sony cameras. And above the mode button, there is some indicators with a little movie like film strip and a camera indicating if you are in record mode or photo mode. And then up on top, you have your photo button here to be able to take pictures just like a traditional DSLR. Along with that, around where the hand strap is, you do have a little slot here and that is your headphone jack so you can monitor your audio. You also have your DC in for charging the camera. And then you also have a mini HDMI and a USB port. So you can actually live stream with this camera if you wanted to. You can plug it in through USB so you can transfer your photos to your computer. I'm not sure if you can do it with video or not, but you do have an SD card that you can put into your computer and do it, you know, a traditional way. Up on top here by the handle, you do have a external mic plug in here. So you can rock a, a different mic or a better mic if you so choose to. And along the front here, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a little button right here you push in and that is how you take off the lens. You push it in and turn it 
counterclockwise and the lens comes right off just like so. And just like a regular DSLR, you line the little dots up and turn it clockwise until you hear the little click sound. Up on top, there's a little cover up here and you have a hot shoe. I assume you can plug in different mics and light accessories up there for that. And you have a cold shoe, so you can mount obviously lights and external mics, a monitor if you wanted to. Um, because it does have a mini HDMI, you can use a regular modern monitor if you wanted to. So it makes that very versatile. Just under the handle, there is your playback speaker. Now the one last thing I want to talk about, makes me a little sad, is the tripod mount on this. Uh, I bought it like this knowing that it was like this. It's cracked down here and I did try super gluing it and it didn't stay. I tried mounting it to a tripod and it's real flimsy. If anybody knows of a way to repair plastic, let me know in the comments because I really want to be able to fix this so that it, you can actually put it on a tripod and use it because right now you, you can only use it handheld. Other than that, that is everything for the physical features of the camera. So I will be selling this camera up on my eBay store if you are interested in buying it. And if you are looking for any of the lenses that I did talk about today, like the lens that I have on here, like the 28 to 70, the 18 to 200, or the Canon Optic. 6.5 millimeter fisheye. Um, I'll leave links to those in the description. If you want to pick up the Sony E-mount to Canon EF adapter, I'll leave that in the description as well, along with batteries that are compatible with this camcorder. And I will leave my Discord page for everybody who wants to join the little camcorder community I am trying to build. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. And with that being said, let's get into this example footage. Jack, come here! Jack, where's mom? Where's mom? Go get her. Go get mom. Go get mom. Go get her.
If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it. And if you like the content, make sure you subscribe because we talk about old school retro camcorders pretty much on a weekly basis. And on that note, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.